Suddenly there came from the sky a sound like the rushing of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Tongues like fire appeared and were distributed to them, and one sat on each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other languages. Acts 2, 2 through 4. Dear God, thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to us. By your Spirit, you helped us to become the boys and girls you want us to be. And you remind us that we're never alone. Help us to learn even more about your Holy Spirit in our story today. Thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for praying with us today. The Kids Bible in a Year podcast is sponsored by Little Passports, delivering monthly activity kit subscriptions that help kids explore the world, cultivate curiosity, and discover new interests with hands-on crafts and activities in cooking, science, crafts, and more, all with a unique cultural twist. Visit littlepassports.com slash blessed to learn more and save 20% with code blessed. The Holy Spirit comes upon God's people. In our last story, Jesus came to the eleven and said, Go and make disciples. Jesus ascended and was taken up in a cloud, and the disciples waited in Jerusalem to receive the Spirit and be witnesses. In this story, the Holy Spirit will descend on the day of Pentecost, and Peter will explain what God is doing. As inspired, by Acts. Hi there, it's Julianne Thompson, guest hosting for Julia Jeffress Sadler with the Kids Bible and Ear podcast. I am so happy you're here. Today, we get to hear the story about how the church began. We'll also get to learn how God has been planning this a wonderful event since the very beginning. Let's jump in. After Jesus ascended to heaven, the apostles were in the upper room. Not many days after, the day of Pentecost had come, and all of the apostles had come together again to pray. While they were praying, a huge wind came and filled the room. Then the Holy Spirit fell in the room, and what seemed like flames of fire from heaven stood above each person. When this happened, The noise was heard from all around Jerusalem, and a large crowd came around the house. The people in the crowd heard all the men and women speaking in other languages, and were instantly amazed and confused. These men are from Galilee. How do they know all of these other languages? They exclaimed from the crowd. Some of the people in the crowd responded, saying, These men are drunk. They have had too many drinks. Peter heard this and realized that the crowd was mocking these men, and he stood up to confront the crowd. These men are not drunk, as you say. What you see here is the fulfillment of Joel's prophecy when he said, In the last days, God says, I will pour my spirit on all people. Peter then quoted the prophecy of Joel, which said that people will prophesy, see visions, and dream dreams as a result of the Holy Spirit falling on these people. Peter continued to preach about the life and ministry of Jesus. He spoke of how Jesus was sent by God and how the people handed Jesus over to the men who put him to death. He then shares the hope of Jesus' resurrection, which is what made it possible for the Holy Spirit to fall, for Jesus left his people the Holy Spirit. Peter said this to instill hope into the people of God. He spoke of David and what he said about God and his place in heaven. He encouraged them that they are witnesses of Jesus' resurrection so that they could, through the Holy Spirit, spread God's word. Peter continued to proclaim Jesus as Lord and Messiah through God the Father. After this, the people asked Peter and the apostles, Well, then what do we do? Peter looked at them and said, Ask forgiveness for your sins and be baptized in water, all of you. Then you will receive the Holy Spirit. This promise will remain true for you and all of your descendants to come who will accept God's call. 
He then warned them, saying, Keep yourselves safe from this very corrupt and twisted generation that you live in. There were many who accepted Christ and were baptized in water that day, and the number of believers grew. About 3,000 people were added to their number. These people then began to follow the apostles and their teaching. They all came together often in fellowship. They committed to this fellowship and continued to eat together and pray together as often as they can. Wow, what an amazing story. Did you know that Pentecost is like a birthday for the church? Just like Christmas is a birthday party for Jesus? It is. Now, when you think of a church, you might think of the place you go to worship God. Maybe it has a steeple or a stained glass window, or maybe it has a rock star stage and lots of lights. Maybe you go to Sunday school or children's church or special kids activities, or maybe you sit with your mom and dad in the main worship service. Whatever your church experience is like, God's church is not actually a place. It's a people. It's all the people all around the world who know and love Jesus and who have received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the friend Jesus said he would send us when he went back to heaven. It's the very Spirit of God living in you. It's the quiet voice reminding you that God loves you. And when you're mad, sad, or upset, it's what gives your prayers power and what helps you understand God's word when you read it. And the very first time followers of Jesus met the Holy Spirit was the special day we learned about today, Pentecost. Now, I want you to know some extremely cool things about the way God sent His Spirit to His church. First, Pentecost wasn't new. It was a celebration God gave His people at Mount Sinai through Moses. Isn't that awesome? God didn't just give His people laws to follow. He gave them parties to enjoy too. He wants us to celebrate the gift of life that He gave us. The Jews celebrated Pentecost by offering the first bundle of grain they harvested each year to the Lord. It was a sign they trusted Him that more food would follow. In a similar way, Jesus' followers were the first people to receive the Holy Spirit. And because it happened on this special holiday, God was giving a sign that many more believers, like you and me, would follow. The second extremely cool thing that God had to do with the little flames of fire that floated above everybody's heads? Now, what do you think that was all about? Let's think back again to Moses and the Israelites at Mount Sinai. When the glory of God rested over the tabernacle, God's house in the desert, what did it look like? Do you remember? It was a cloud by day and a fire at night. Fire was a picture of God living among his people in the tabernacle. And from that time all the way until this time, everybody believed that God lived in the tabernacle or in the temple. But when the Holy Spirit came, suddenly fire floated above people, just like it had over the tabernacle. It was a sign from God that now His people were becoming the tabernacle and the temple. He was going to live inside our hearts. That's why we can worship God anywhere today, not just in a church, because now we are His home and He is with us everywhere we go. The last extremely cool thing about Pentecost had to do with all the languages. Jews from all over the world were visiting Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost. They spoke Greek and Latin and a whole bunch of other languages. But when Peter and the other believers who received the Holy Spirit began speaking, each person understood them in their own language. Whoa! 
Do you remember another story when people spoke a bunch of languages? Yes, the Tower of Babel. Just like God used different languages to separate people back then, now he used language to bring them all back together. What once kept people apart now made them one. They shared one purpose, one mission, one Holy Spirit. That's how the church was born and how we can live as God's church today. I am so happy you joined me. Come back next time to hear how Peter and John helped a man just like Jesus. Remember, the Bible is the best story ever told. It's God's story to you, and it's all true. Did today's podcast bring you joy? Help others discover us by writing a review, and let's spread the gospel far and wide. Thanks for listening to Pray.com Kids Bible in a Year. For more inspiring stories and wisdom to last a lifetime, download the Pray.com app for free today. Thanks for listening to Kids Bible in a Year. I want to invite our adult listeners to check out my other show, Unapologetic, God's Truth on Today's Topics. It's unfiltered, important, inspiring, and we have awesome conversations and amazing guests such as Candace Cameron Bray, Vice President Mike Pence, Dr. Robert Jeffress, Shannon Bream, Maddie Pruitt, and so many others. We are helping you have conversations that empower you to have bold faith in a broken world. You'll be excited, inspired, and encouraged in your faith as you check out Unapologetic. Remember that you can tune in wherever you get your podcasts and on Pray.com.